All right, everybody, back with a brand new show on anti-aging and longevity. If you've ever wondered, one of the key factors in improving your overall, not only lifespan, which is the number of years that you live, but also your health span, that's the number of healthy years you live, today's show will hopefully help with that. So there's a new science into something called mitophagy. I'll share exactly what that means. But what it alludes to are these powerhouses, these energy cells or batteries inside of our cells. All of us have them called mitochondria. And they produce energy. But what they don't always share with you, what you don't always hear about, is what they do is they help to combat inflammation. They help to actually combat the wearing down of the body, the breakdown, the catabolism, the wearing away of this actual organism of who we are. Think about it. If every single day you broke down just a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, well, over time, that's essentially what happens to our body. But it can happen faster or it can happen slower, and the mitochondria have a huge part in doing this. Now, on just about a week ago's show, and I'll link that up here today, we went over medications and drugs that speed up that process. They basically wipe out these batteries inside of your cells called your mitochondria. And that was episode 2958. We'll link everything up today. I don't want you to worry about all the numbers. Head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2965 as you're following along with the show today, because I'm going to link up a bunch of studies there for you as well. The first one I wanted to go over, and this is really important because a lot of the time with anti-aging, we're focused on just one thing. Like we're focused on nutrition or focused on exercise or focused on toxin removal. They're all important. Don't get me wrong. They're all important. But sometimes we lose sight of what's the nutrition or the exercise or the detoxing doing for our body. Well, when we look at this, we start to see, oh, Science and scientists are actually looking at how are those things actually improving longevity so that we can do more of them. I'm going to open one up right now. It's from Frontiers, and this was a study that I wanted you to know about, so I'm going to actually read it for you here today on the show. And I think what you'll get from it is a sense that we are beginning to actually figure out and understand how the human body ages. That's one big part. But also, what can we do to slow the aging process? That's important as well, because we can't stop it yet. But we can reverse unhealthy aging, which can literally reduce our biological age. And if you don't know your biological age, you absolutely should test that. You should do it now so that all the healthy interventions that I know that you're going to be doing, you can see if they're working or not. So go to highperformancehealth.org slash, uh, well, I'll get that for you. I believe it's bio age, but let me, let me check that for you. I'm going to link it up here today. So again, go to stephencabral.com slash 2965, and I'll put the biological age test there. Simple link. Again, we work with the best of the best lab companies. And what you're going to do is you're going to be able to actually find out what your biological age is with a simple finger prick. But let's move on to that study called mitophagy an emerging role in aging and age-associated disease. This, this was published in Frontiers. I'll link it up for you. In very short paragraph, maybe eight lines. I'll translate it into normal speak after I'm done reading it. It says, mitochondrial dysfunction constitute one of the hallmarks of aging and is characterized by irregular mitochondria mitochondrial morphology, insufficient ATP production, accumulation of mitochondrial DNA mutations, increased production of mitochondrial reactive oxygen species, and consequent, consequent oxidative damage to nucleic acids, proteins, and lipids. Mitophagy, a mitochondrial quality control mechanism enabling the de degradation of damaged and superfluous mitochondria, prevents such detrimental effects and reinstates cellular homeostas homeostasis in response to stress. To date, there is increasing evidence that mitophagy is significantly impaired in several human pathologies, including aging, and age-related diseases such as neurodegenerative diseases and disorders, cardiovascular pathologies, and cancer. Therapeutic interventions aiming at the induction of mitophagy may have the potency to ameliorate these dysfunctions. So 
And what does all of that mean? Well, what it means is this, and they go on to introduce the entire study, which I'm not gonna bore you with right now, but I wanna share with you the exciting details. So basically, this is what happens. When we accumulate toxins from the environment, let's call them heavy metals, let's aluminum, mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic. Uh, let's talk about things like pesticides, herbicides, Roundup. Uh, what else can we talk about? Parabens, plastics, all of these things, right? 100,000 plus man-made chemicals. All right, they come in our body. What happens? They create inflammation, immune-based response, and weakening of the mitochondria. What else? Well, we might get a virus. We might get a um, bacterial-based infection. It can weaken the mitochondria as well. We do really hard workouts, and that um, creates inflammation. Uh, mitochondria obviously help, but it can then weaken the mitochondria. So all of these assaults on the physical body can weaken the mitochondria over time. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but what happens is that the mitochondria get weaker and weaker, and we have less per cell. So typically we have anywhere from hundreds to thousands per cell, depending on the type of tissue it is in the body. For example, the heart can have 5,000 mitochondria per cell. It's pretty amazing, right? So when we look at that, we say over time they get weaker and less of them, okay? So what does that mean? Well, it also makes it worse when a natural process such as inflammation, cardiovascular-based, neurodegenerative, toxicity, cancer, stops a natural process in the body called mitophagy. Think of it as autophagy, right? We've been talking a lot about autophagy since 2016 on the podcast with the uh, Nobel Prize in cancer for autophagy, right? What happens when the body's not getting enough fuel? Well, it goes through a process of destroying weaker cells immune cells, pathogenic tissue, cancer cells. We've known that. Well, what happens with natural processes in the body is when the mitochondria get weaker, what should happen, doesn't always, what should happen is those mitochondria die off and they're replaced by stronger ones. The problem is they're only replaced by stronger ones and they only die off if the body is at a state of homeostasis, a balance of dynamic equilibrium. And the way that this happens is through very specific lifestyle-based interventions, meaning that it's not automatically going to happen. As you get older, yeah, things are going to get worse. Only if you are not following the specific steps the human body needs in order to be able to regenerate. Now, for now, we are all getting older, but we can reduce the biological age. So in the beginning, and I'm always honest with all of my labs. Again, you know I was very sick from essentially as a child, um, then very sick at 17 all the way through 27. And it was absolutely better. There's no doubt about that. Like absolutely better after I met my mentor, but I didn't know how well I could get. And now in my mid 40s, I feel better than I did in my mid 30s. And certainly in my mid 20s and definitely in my teens. So how does that happen? Well, believe it or not, even in my early 30s, when I first did biological age testing, my biological age was like 20 years higher than my regular age. It was, it was terrible. I still had high levels of inflammation. I was still, you know, I was not that I don't work a lot today, but it was different type of stress, all these different things. And what I can share with you is that I had to focus on anti-aging myself. And I really focused on it with my high performance health curriculum that I teach about three years ago. And over that time, I was able to reduce my rate of aging from over a year. So basically for one year of living would be a little bit more than a year of biological aging. And then I was able to take that. And over time, I was now able to get it down to 0.67 to 0.69 rate of aging. And that reduced my biological age all the way down from mid 40s to 32 years old. And so what I'm sharing with you is that now uh, my body's aging for about seven to eight months of the year, but not for about four to five months. And that's enabling now my body to not necessarily not age at all, it is, but age at a slower pace. And that's what I want to share with everyone. I wanna be able to give others the same energy, and vitality and essentially just passion and, and that, that I have for life each and every day. But a lot of that comes with being able to reduce the inflammation, reduce the overall essentially onslaught of free radicals inside of the body. And part of that was building up my mitochondria. So what I wanna share with you right now are 10 steps to building back up your mitochondria that anybody can use. 
And next week, I'm going to go in depth on just the nutrition part of it. All right. So hopefully you'll find this helpful. We're going to go over those 10 steps right now. And then I'll give you in an out. I mean, for people who want to go really in depth and learn about this over the course of 20 hours or so, even become a high performance health coach if they want, they can go to highperformancehealth.org. But let me give you 10 really powerful ways to boost the mitochondria. One of them I already alluded to is exercise. So exercise in the beginning, for someone like myself with Addison's disease or low levels of mitochondria and no ATP, that's the ability to produce uh, adenosine triphosphate energy for things like walking up a flight of stairs. It was brutal. So what I wanna share with you is this, is that you have to start slow. But exercise causes the body to then call for more mitochondrial production. That's called mitochondrial biogenesis. That means the body is forced to make more mitochondria if you don't overdo it, create too much inflammation. So very slowly increase your exercise tolerance by just adding just a little bit more per week, never more than 10%. All right, the next one, let's go right into nutrition that I talked about, that I'll talk about more next week in the diet. But part of that is just caloric restriction. I know it seems like it doesn't make sense because if you do caloric restriction, well, that means then that you're not going to have enough fuel, calories, literally to produce energy. But what happens is when the body is in a fasted state, especially with intermittent fasting, it enables your body to go through a state of not necessarily starvation, but it flips on a survival-based switch. And that survival-based switch will cause you to create more mitochondria in the cell and stronger ones and go through a period of mito uh, mitophagy in order to be, make the body strong enough to then go hunt for that more food or go forage for more food. So it's a survival-based mechanism which greatly improves oxidative stress. All right, the next one, we talked about this before. We have a whole product built in this called Cell Boost. Cell Boost literally boosts mitochondria in the cell. <laughs> That's exactly what it does. Um, you can always find the products that we use, the lab tests we use, everything at stephencabral.com slash shop. That'll take you over to Equal Life. That's our private practice. And, uh, and you can find everything right there with Cell Boost. So inside of Cell Boost, though, you have all the mitochondria and nutrients. We know that the body and the mitochondria need B vitamins. They need vitamin C, but also there's greater things as well, like PQQ, uh, L-carnitine, and many others, coenzyme Q10, that will help boost the mitochondria. So specific nutrients. After that, it's getting enough sleep. This is, it's just so far overlooked because right now we have so many people preaching online, you know, I get by on five hours of sleep. It's all I need. No, it's not all you need. You're surviving, but you're not thriving and you will burn your body out. And so for sleep, what we want to look at is total hours. That really does matter. Seven to nine hours per night and aiming for two hours of REM sleep to rejuvenate the brain and 90 minutes, at least 75 minutes of deep sleep to rejuvenate the body and the mitochondria. All right. Next up, I want to share with you red light therapy. Red light therapy does work. Is it highest and best on my list? No, but it helps improve the collagen in the skin, fine line, wrinkles, hair growth, and it also improves mitochondria. Cold exposure. This is not going to work for exhausted people, worn out people, people already producing too much dopamine, too much norepinephrine. Not great for those individuals. Those individuals do way better with sauna, but for people that are kind of lower mood, lower energy, inflamed, they could get a lot out of two to three minutes, maybe a little bit more of cold base exposure. Doesn't need to be 37 degrees, it can actually be 55, 56 degrees in order to get you benefit as well. All right, a couple more I wanna share with you is, I already shared with you the sauna, the cold support, using a product called, and I talked about this, inside of the mitochondrial nutrients, like the foundational ones, your B vitamins, your zinc, your copper, like those are absolutely needed. And the, the specialty ones are the PQQ, the coenzyme Q10, uh, and then another one, nicotinamide riboside or nicotinamide mononucleotide. Um, we use NR, nicotinamide riboside, inside of that cell boost, and those help to produce more NAD, a basically version and version of niacin, vitamin B3. And what it does is it helps to produce more ATP. It helps to improve overall mitochondrial strength and capacity. All right, sunlight. Some of these are just free, 
right? They just are. But too many of us, well, we live in cold climates. We don't necessarily get those during the six months, eight months of the year where the sun isn't strong enough. And just because the sun is strong outside doesn't mean we're actually outside. We're not getting morning sun. We're not letting that touch our skin. If we do go outside, maybe only our hands are exposed or our face is exposed, or we're wearing so much sunscreen that we block all of that anyways. But remember, sunlight is a powerful one for the mitochondria along the same lines as red light. Okay, another one that I wanna share with you and you can kind of get a two for one is infrared therapy. So infrared sauna therapy, uh, it doesn't have to be in a sauna. So that's why I like, but you can just double up. If you have an infrared sauna, well, you get the infrared benefits as well. The difference with the infrared heat is that it actually penetrates the skin to a deeper level. So if we go in a regular sauna, which is amazing by the way, it heats the outside air. But an infrared sauna, it actually penetrates the body from anywhere from one to five millimeters, depending on if it's near, mid, or far infrared wavelengths. So that can be helpful. And I'll just want to give you one more here today, and that is non-sleep deep rest. I have a whole podcast on it. It's essentially what we're doing for relaxation during the day. So the relaxation could be meditation, sure, but it could just be going for a calming walk. It could be um, repeating a mantra over, over and over to yourself. It could be box breathing. It could be resonance breathing. Anything that induces what's called the parasympathetic nervous system. Because as you start to move more into the natural health-based realm, you begin to understand that so much of the healing process actually comes from getting out of fight or flight. Sure, there's gut issues, there's parasites, there's heavy metals, there's viruses, there's immune dysfunction. But if we want to truly heal, we have to get out of that stress-based zone. We have to get out of fight or flight. We can't live in that zone. We can enter into it, we can dip our toes in it, but we can't be there all day long. And so finding these relaxation techniques can be an absolute game changer in order to not only improve your overall health, but your longevity as well. Hopefully today's podcast was helpful. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Let me thought it, let me know what you thought about the show, but also other ideas you have, other topics for shows. We take all of this into consideration. This show really is about you, our community, and how we can help. Make sure you're tuning in each and every day to the Cabral Concept. And next week, we'll do another show on the absolute best diet to improve your mitochondrial energy. Take care, everybody. Do share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.